Oh, hi there. I'm Sam Tucker. And one of the cameras filming me right now is a modern iPhone. And one of them is an older iPhone. Can you tell which iPhone is which? <laughs> Good luck. Yes, everyone, welcome. Today, we are battling the iPhone 4 versus the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Not quite the beginning and not quite the end of iPhones, but hey, I think we should see an interesting difference because there is a 12 year age gap between them, which may be older than some of the audience watching. But not only will we be battling these though, because we will have a few uh, little stepping stones in the way to make things interesting. Yes, we are throwing in the iPhone C and the iPhone 7 Plus into the mix. Let's see which iPhone is the best now. <laughs> All right, let's face them up. All right, starting off with build. So the iPhone 4 was really renowned for its beauty. I mean, it's just two slabs of black glass there. They did bring it back in later models, but this is a frosted touch, which is that's a lot better for fingerprints if we can uh, <laughs> see the difference there. But Apple, they're always going back and forth between which one's glossy and which one's matte. Oh, excuse me, a little pube there. Let's just get that pube off the screen. Compare that to the iPhone 5C or the iPhone 5 cheap. I think Johnny wanted to make you think that the C standard for colourful, but it was one of the cheaper models of iPhones ever made. And this is like the only iPhone you're going to get if you want some bright colours and something interesting. Everything else is just metallic or glass. Let's have a look at the 7 Plus now. Ah, oh, the pluses, you know. Let me know in the comments, are you, are you like a plus and a max phone size person? I'm not. It's strange. I think the smaller the person, the more they tend to like the bigger phones. When the bigger the person, ooh, big fat head people. They kind of like the, uh, the the smaller phones. Here's a difference that they made, which I really didn't like when they did it, is they smoothed out the edges, which yes, makes it somewhat easier to hold, but also makes it easier to unhold and drop, which is what happened to my yeah. iPhone 6 back in the day. And of course, at this period of time in Apple, they were starting to experiment with the nipples. And wow, if we're talking about nipples, Oh, check out those chunky boys. You know, this is when Apple just stopped caring about any semblance of, of sleekness and, and craftiness. Yeah, listen to the sound test. There's the massive perker, the mini perker, and the no perkers. Mmm, mmm. Okay, so how are we gonna score this? Well, for the overall hand feel, I'm gonna give it to this nice sleek iPhone 4. It fits lovely in the hand. It has that beautiful stainless steel edge, but because it's so small, it doesn't feel so heavy. So the iPhone 4 gets a point there. And now I'm actually gonna give a point to the iPhone 5C for connectivity, because it has the more modern lightning port here. Of course, none of the ones here have the USB type C. <laughs> you need the iPhone 15 and a lot of money that goes along with that. And it also has the beloved headphone jack. Yes, once they got up to these models of phones, they started having too much courage and they took out that headphone jack. So now you need the courage to buy some wireless headphones. So for connectivity, the iPhone C gets the point. If we have a closer look at the screens, I think that is Retina. Those are some quite small pixels on that. So this is the start of the Retina age. And then you have a slightly bigger screen with the iPhone C and even slightly more colorful as well. Then you have the iPhone 7 Plus with the bigger screen still. And of course, the biggest of them all is the Pro phone. The Pro Motion does look smooth and nice. One drawback, of course, is that beautiful dynamic island they got at the top. But I will admit, just like the notch on my MacBook, after a while, you stop noticing these things. And so, for screen, it goes to the Pro. All right, that's the first round build. Before we get into the performance category, you're probably thinking, Sam, you got so many iPhones here. How the heck did you charge them all? Well, it was easy. Thanks to this video sponsor, Ugreen. Hey there, I've got something special in my hand for you. It's a Ugreen Nexode X charger. That's right, developed by Professor X, the most powerful X-Man, he channeled his psychic powers into a 65 watt wall charger that's more capable than ever. With three ports, it can fast charge three devices at a time. Or if you plug in just one, it could charge an M1 MacBook Air to over 50% in just half an hour. Want even more gusto? <laughs> oh, then bust out the 160 watt Nexodex charger. That's got four fast charging ports, 
for all of your devices. And with so much strength, a single port could charge a MacBook Pro to over 50% in just 30 minutes. And thanks to their advanced chip solutions, these chargers are a lot smaller than the competition. Oh, and don't worry Samsung users, because both Nexodex chargers support Samsung's 45 watt super fast charging 2.0. Bixby will be pleased. And with the thermal guard in place, all your connected devices are protected while charging. So what are you waiting for? Get the Nexoed X charger that's right for you by clicking the link in the description and get yourself a heck of a deal. All right, let's test out performance. Before we do a turn on test, let's do a turn off test. Eh, 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 eh. Which one will turn off first? Okay, I just realized all the screens turn black at the same time, so there's not a great way to tell. So they all get a point for this one. All right, let's do a turn on test. Now I don't have four hands, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the oldest and the youngest at the same time. They all, the uh, iPhone 4 actually turned on the Apple logo a bit quicker than the Pro did. And so did the C compared to the 7 Plus. Huh. Okay, so it's these two versus these two. The Pro did turn on first. Oop. And even though it started later, the 7 Plus did manage to win. And the 4 has finally turned on. And the iPhone C, I think, is lagging behind even with the, the little delay of when I turned it on. So the Pro easily gets the point for turn on time. If we have a look at what OS they're all running, the Pro is running iOS 17, the 7 Plus is running iOS 15, the C, iOS 10, and the iPhone 4 is running <laughs> iOS 5. So we get a good look at all the different iOSs. The classic slide to unlock. Remember how magical it was when Steve Jobs did that on stage? Ah, oh, it's still more satisfying. Just have a look at those beautiful skeuomorphic glass and shiny fabric-y icons of the, of the iOS of old and compare that to these flat nothings. Boring, boring design. So you know what, I'm throwing out a point right now. For iOS design, I'm giving the iPhone 4 a point. As far as iOS capability, we'll go with the Pro because it, well, it just works. If we're looking at navigation, these three models have the old school home button and the iPhone 7 Plus, the home button isn't even a button. It's just a vibrating piece of glass. They put in that little haptic engine thing there. And of course with the Pro, there's no home button. It's just full gesture control on a beautiful Blackberry. So for navigation, we're giving it to the modern Pro because the home button does kind of suck. All right, last test for the performance category. Let's check out their battery life. Oh, they're all still on. All right, well, this one might take a while, so let's call it a tie. Moving on to the apps category. As you can see, even the four comes with a bunch of apps, even that beautiful compass that has wood grain and glass. The calculator looks like an actual calculator. So you gotta take up all the screen with a giant microphone. How do you do, everyone? How are we all doing? Nice and simple. Pardon me. Of course, not all of the apps were quite so nice. If we have a look at the Game Center, this is the notorious green gambling playing board that looks quite horrendous. And the weather ran on Yahoo weather and it says failed to update. Moving on to the 5C now. Now we've got that flat design that uh, was controversial at the time. Although there still appears to be some texture in the notes. A bit yellowy, but I don't know if that's just because of the, the phone screen has aged and started to yellow. Compare that to the uh, old Notes app, which is just so charming. Of course, you got the Notes with the dark mode as well, with the, with the more modern phones. And then you got the latest and greatest big Notes, which has gotten rid of all of the skeuomorphism and has just made it totally flat. So for the style of the apps, I am gonna give it to the iPhone 4, but in terms of the amount of apps that you're able to use, we're giving it to the iPhone Pro because you can't actually download any apps on the old phones anymore. I wonder if uh, the internet still works on these. I won't show which tabs are open, but my wife currently has over a hundred tabs open, which is actually not quite a lot uh, <laughs> by her standards. But how many tabs do you have open on your phone? Let me know. So looks like these three are able to play YouTube. And they're all playing the same ad. <laughs> Why are we all getting Oreo ads? Too many Sam's in the kitchen. Whereas the four, it's warning us that it might not work, but let's see what does happen. And yes, 
looks like it doesn't work. So you won't be doing any YouTube on the iPhone 4, which might be good, maybe you won't be wasting time, but I won't be getting paid. So iPhone 4 loses a point. All right then, time for the category we're all really looking for, the camera. Let's test out the cameras on these bad boys. And you can see some slight differences in the interfaces here. Again, the iPhone 4 with your classic buttons that look like real buttons. Mm, I love that. Let's uh, do some sort of selfie thing here. <laughs> Check this out. Okay, so we're filming on all four cameras now. How are we all doing today? Um, so there's a little bit of a difference in the selfie cams. And unfortunately the Pro really does show off the greys that I got going on there. Whereas the iPhone 4, you know, maybe just looks like an artifact on the screen. The iPhone 4 is more flattering. The iPhone 14 is more true. Hmm, but to really see what these cameras are capable of, let's take them outside. Very gingerly, just careful, careful, okay. Well, some surprise results there, but obviously we're gonna give it to the pro. Ooh, and that was the great iPhone battle. I hope you saw how some of the technology has advanced in some ways and regressed in other ways. Courage. Anyway, who would have guessed that the latest <laughs> iPhone is the best one to use? <laughs> Could have fooled me. Anyway, big thanks to you, Green, for helping us charge all the devices in this one. Why not click the link in the description and check out their charges today? Let me know which phone was the winner in your book in the comments below. And until next time, stay funky everyone. Sam time, signing off. Subscribe today. Oh, hi there. <laughs> we should see a good, uh, a good performance gap since there is a poop in my butt. Let's wait for this siren to go away. Oh, <laughs> they, they're averting. No guys, let me turn you off. Just relax. I'm just such a turn on. They won't do it. All right, here we go.